I wanted to rinse off my feet because I had some sweaty dogs a barking and I didn't realize that that was up there. So I got in the shower, grabbed that thing, pointed it at my feet and then turned on the water and the water came raining down from the top and I got all wet. Oh well. Hello from on board the Virgin Voyages Valiant Lady. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I travel all around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it was like to be there. It is our final day on this beautiful ship. I'm not necessarily a big fan of the Virgin Voyages cruise experience. If you've watched any of my other videos, about this cruise line or any other cruise line or any other tourist destination, you'll know that I always give you my honest opinion. I very often tell you the things that I think are not working well and that hasn't changed on this ship, on this journey as well. This is our second time cruising with Virgin Voyages. It might be the last time for a while, not because it's horrible, just because there are other cruise lines that offer us more of what we enjoy. And by we, I mean Marcus and I. I'm not talking about myself in the Royal. And I have done a cabin tour of this smaller balcony. They call it a sea terrace cabin. I say smaller because on our first Virgin Voyages cruise, we stayed in a very large suite with a gigantic balcony. That video is in my library. If I remember, I will link it in the description below. This is the first time that we've actually stayed in one of the sea terrace cabins, which is a more standard cabin here on board. And now that we've stayed in one, I have a little bit more information. I want to tell you a little bit about some observations of what it was like being here over the last week. And I want to show you something that no other cruise cabin can do and that I've actually not seen yet. And I'm really looking forward to actually experience it. Let me just remind you that we have lived in this cabin now for a week. So just remember when you move into your cabin here on the ship, it's going to look a little bit more it's just not going to look as lived in as this cabin does right now. And one of the cool things about this cabin, one thing that I just, that like kind of puts a smile on my face every time is when you leave the cabin, it like, it senses that you're not there anymore. I'm not sure how it knows, but it knows. I'm actually pretty sure that that thing is a motion sensor. Anyways, if you leave the cabin for a while, there's motors that close the drapes, and then when you come back, it greets you and they open up again. It looks like this. And I just think that's really cool. I think the first time I've experienced these sort of automatic blinds, automatic drapes, was in the Aria, the Aria Hotel in Las Vegas. That's the first time that I saw this sort of automated, automated room technology. And I just love how you come back to the cabin and it's like, Welcome, here's your beautiful view. And another cool thing about it is when you want to close the drapes, you just have to either press the button or you can just give it a little tug and then they'll close automatically. I'll show you here. So if you just like tug it once, they'll just keep going on their own. Closed. This whole system, however, does have a a little bit of a negative side to it and that is if the drapes are closed like in the middle of the night or early in the morning this happens to us one of us wakes up earlier and just wants to take a quick look outside to see okay it, are we in port what's the weather like you know there's a lot of reasons why you might want to just take a quick look outside and the problem is that when the drapes are closed you have to be very careful about just like slightly moving it to the side because if you tug a little bit too hard on here then they're just going to automatically open all the way if you're staying with somebody who's still trying to sleep in the morning and you just wanted to take a little peek outside this is going to be a problem this will create a conversation by the way the mind shift 2 is just arriving here in port uh, and I think that is the ship where Marcus and I stayed in this really huge suite with a gigantic wall of windows that also had an automatic blind system that had its pluses and minuses. Let me just give you a quick look around the cabin here. Like I said, the bed isn't, I just threw the covers back on here and kind of put the pillows there. It will look much nicer when you get here or after the cabin steward is in it. Here's something I didn't realize until we actually stayed here. And that is the furniture and the decorations is somewhat sparse. It's something that people talk about when they review and critique these cabins. On most other cruise ships, 
this space would be taken up by a sofa, which is usually then where a kid or the kids sleep. Virgin Voyages is an adults-only cruise line. There is no sofa there. There's this strange box, which I'm going to be getting to in a second, and then a chair with a like a modular desk piece that you can put there if you want to have a snack or work on your computer or something. Like I said, excuse all our junk up here. There's the refrigerator is in here, and then there's a little like bar space here. Those two bottles of wine are bottles of wine that we purchased here on board, but on Virgin, um, ess essential drinks like water and iced tea and cola and things like that are included. And in the cabin every day, you get two carafes of water. So that's kind of a nice thing as well. Then you have this little desk space here and on other cruise lines, the this desk kind of thing will extend all the way to the wall or to where the bed is. And then you'll have a sofa over here and that gives you yeah, more space to put your things. However, what I think is great about the sparseness of it all here, you can see Marcus in the, in the hammock on the balcony out there, by the way. The nice thing about having fewer things, fewer furniture pieces in the cabin is there's a lot more just open space. Most standard balcony cabins on cruise ships are smaller than your average hotel room. I'm sure this cabin is as well. But because of the sparseness of decorations, there's just more space to get around. And especially when two people are getting ready at the same time, uh, you know, maybe you just came from the pool and you have to hurry up to get to your dinner reservation or to get to the show or whatever. When two people are getting ready and trying to get their clothes out of the closet or get something from the suitcase under the bed or whatever, in in a lot of other balcony cabins, it's tight and you're constantly like having to like do this dance to get around each other. And we haven't really had that problem in this cabin just because the space between the bed and the wall here is a little bit bigger than, than a lot of other cabins we've been in. And especially this space here, it's just, it's very open because there is no sofa there and the desk is a little bit smaller. So. It's kind of a plus and a minus at the same time, but we've we've kind of enjoyed it. We'll take a quick look in the bathroom. The cabin does have a Morgan approved bathroom door. That's a door that closes all the way from the bottom of the top and it's not see-through. The bathroom is not spacious. This is probably, oh gosh, what does it look like in there? Sorry, everybody. This is probably one of the smallest bathrooms that I've had in a in a cruise cabin. I think even the bathroom on the river cruise I was just on, which had a much smaller cabin altogether, I think that bathroom was more spacious than this. So if you're gonna be two people in here who have a lot of stuff, you're just gonna have to be really organized with where you put the stuff. By the way, when we stayed in our Rockstar suite on our first cruise with Virgin, they had these really sort of fancy, high-class, upscale amenities uh, in bottles that you could take with you, and these are the same products. At least they smell exactly the same. They're just not in bottles that you can take with, so they kind of make it sound like you get something a little bit higher class when you stay in a suite compared to a normal balcony cabin, but you don't. It just, they just change the packaging. Another thing is the shower has the handheld thing and they also have that up there and I didn't realize that and on the first day I wanted to rinse off my feet because I had some sweaty dogs a barking and I didn't realize that that was up there so I got in the shower grabbed that thing, pointed it at my feet, and then turned on the water, and the water came raining down from the top, and I got all wet. Oh well. As far as counter space in the bathroom, that's it. That's what you're looking at there. There is kind of like a cubby here, and then there's space down there, but you know, usually you kind of have like a, an assortment of products that you want to have out and at the ready at all times and there's just there's not a lot of space here that's why it's good to bring one of these hangy things for your products that will help you sort of keep organized speaking of space there is not a lot of hideaway closet space here there's a lot of hanging space that's for sure but to sort of hide your stuff away 
This is another thing where you're gonna have to be really organized. We brought enough clothes for a week-long cruise and as you can see all of these drawers are like just packed full of our stuff um, and still I think we still have stuff in the suitcase so this is also something that's not really optimal on other cruise lines you'll have more space to like unpack and hide away your stuff. Like I said, by not having an extra set of dresser drawers and stuff here, it adds more space, but then the negative is you don't have it. I'm totally fine with this cabin. There's nothing about it that I think is a like absolute deal breaker, but there is one thing this cabin can do that I have never seen on any other of the like 25 cruise ships I've been on. And I'm gonna show you that right after this commercial break. Did you get one? What was it about? Write it in the comments below. Virgin Voyages is famous for offering like a brand new, updated, pimped and primped cruise experience. A lot of the things they do on board are a little bit different or very different than other cruise ships. And there's something about the bed, about the cabin here that is very different. You can see there's the bed and there's like this chunk here what is that? Well, this entire bed space can be converted to a sofa, to a sitting area. And I've actually never seen what that looks like in real life. I've seen videos of it. I've seen pictures of it. And it used to be the standard that every day the cabin stewards would take the bed apart and make it into a sofa during the day and make it back into a bed at night. Virgin Voyages has learned from their mistakes and they don't do that anymore, but if you ask, they will turn it into a sofa and we've asked to have that done. So I'm actually going to the beach now and when I get back from the beach, I'm really looking forward to seeing what it looks like. And when I get back, we'll take a look at it together kind of like for the first time. Are you ready? Here it comes. All right, it is several hours later. I'm back from the beach and let's take a look. This is what it looks like. And I mean, it's it's really cool. It's, it's so nice to have then all this space and an area where you can just sort of chill and hang out. But is it necessary? Is it really useful? Is it worth the I mean, this must be a ton of extra work to take off all the bedding, hide it someplace. Well, it's actually on the floor there. I don't know about this. I don't... It's very cool. It also makes the cabin seem much larger again with all this big open area, but I feel like it's another one of those cases of Virgin trying to do something different without really thinking about, is it functional? Is it necessary? Does it somehow create a better value or is it just different, you know? And think of all the work it takes to facilitate this. They have to take off all the bedding, somehow flip part of it over there. How does that even work? I see this part of this mattress must be kind of like attached there. And then this part is the legs like that go down by the feet. And so they swing that around and make it into a bed. It is definitely something unlike I have seen on any other cruise ship. I don't think any other cruise line is doing this. And to be honest, I don't think any other cruise line ever will. Virgin has stopped making it part of the daily, just the daily rhythm in the beginning. This is what the cabin looked like every time during the day when you left to go to breakfast and came back. If the cabin stewards were in your room, they would have done this automatically unless you asked them not to. And I think Virgin just realized, okay, so many people are saying just leave it as it is. That doesn't really make sense to do it anymore at all. And I wonder if it's been so long since they had been doing this that I wonder if my cabin steward even knew how to do it without asking somebody. 
You know what I mean? It might be like they don't even learn it in the training anymore because if it's been phased out in general, then maybe they don't even teach it anymore. But here it is. Please tell me what you think about this. Does this add value? Is it something that you think is so cool that it's like put you over the edge and you think, all right, now I definitely want to cruise with Virgin. It doesn't disturb me. And if I didn't think about how much work it was, then, you know, it could be nice to have this during the day if you were planning to hang out in your cabin with several people and for that it would be a good idea and you know maybe if you wanted to have a meal in your cabin here and if they could put a you know like a bigger table there that would be quite nice but it's not like that anyways let me know what you think in the comments below i'm always curious to get your opinion about this these kind of things. I will now be going to take a shower to get all this sand off of me. I feel kind of bad that I'm still so sandy. Oh, Sandy, baby. Oh, Sandy. And then we will be going out to have dinner at one of the 21 included restaurants here on board for our final night on the cruise. If you didn't get the notice yet, my next cruise is already booked. It's the Wonder of the Seas, the current biggest cruise ship in the world. We'll be leaving two weeks after we disembark, so two weeks from tomorrow at the moment I'm recording this, but by the time this goes online, I might even already actually be on that ship if everything goes as planned. That will be a new experience for me. I have not cruised with the Wonder of the Seas. Wait, did I say Harmony the Seas before? Or did I say Wonder? <laughs> My next cruise is already booked. It's the Wonder of the Seas. Marcus has never cruised with that class of ship. I have cruised on the Harmony of the Seas, but this will be a fun experience. Hopefully it's still as warm as it has been on this trip. Anyways, I've gone off on a tangent again. I just wanna let you know what's coming up on this channel so that if you haven't subscribed yet, you have a reason to do it now. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. See you soon.